So I've been doing this for 18 years, been using Cartiform as my go-to for cartilage for the past three years, for the majority of my cases. 70 Cartiform procedures from 2013 through 2016, and that's excluding my backfield cases, which I'll go through. So Cartiform is derived from human hyaline articular cartilage, and it's composed of factors that promote articular cartilage repair, viable chondrocytes, extracellular matrix, and chondrogenic proteins. What's real nice is it has a two-year shelf life at minus 80. It's a single-step procedure. It's easily cut and shaped into the desired form. It's flexible, and it's affixed with the fiber and glue, sutures and or suture anchors. For the first few years, it was available in a one-centimeter disc and a two-centimeter disc. And as we know, most femoral condyle lesions are oblong, and there are now rectangular discs that are available. Cartiform preserves the native articular cartilage layers, the distinct cell morphology, and the ECM content within each layer. So my personal cartiform indications are many. Focal isolated defects in the 8 millimeter to 2 centimeter range. Any age, my present range is from 11 to 65, all compartments. Cartiform is my go-to graft for the patellofemoral compartment. And for the femoral condyle, it's nice when you can expect the unexpected. So we frequently have these lesions that we think are going to be three or four millimeters based on the T1 MRI. And then we get in there and we debride it appropriately, and we are now left with a one and a half to two centimeter lesion. Uh, primary and revision cases, shallow and deep defects. For the deep defects, I autograph bone graft the defect. For contained lesions, it's nice, but particularly for uncontained lesions, that's when I've been particularly pleased with the Carter form, when you don't have a lot of other great options. I'll use it as oats backfill, and since I've been using Carter form over the past three years, I've only done Carter cell procedures, of which I used to do about five per year. I only do those when patients specifically ask for that. So my initial case, I backfilled the lateral trochlea in a Maryland soccer player, where she had a grade four lesion that was about 10, 11 millimeters in the medial femoral condyle, and I felt that that was a little bit big for her trochlear harvest site, and her medial trochlea had some grade one changes, so I didn't want to go there. And so I took the oats from the lateral, femoral, lateral trochlea, and then I grafted with the one centimeter backfill area of, with cartiform. And I initially, with that case, fixed it with a central suture. But for, for most one centimeter defects, I've moved on to just press fitting these lesions. So we know from Simonian and others that there's no contact area that's void of any pressure when you're doing these oats harvest sites. And so, you know, if you go back and look at your patients, we've probably had a few patients where they didn't have any patellar wear beforehand, and if you follow them out for years, they may have developed some patellar cartilage changes because of the harvest site that we took. So on the femoral condyle, it's my go-to for moderate demand patients, and for high demand athletes, if it's a lesion that's a little larger than I can tolerate with an oats, too large to backfill, in the years past, I would have brought an athlete back if I have a 15, 16 millimeter lesion and done a fresh osteochondral allograft. When I know I have a big lesion from the beginning, I still like fresh osteochondral allograft in my athletes, but I've not staged these anymore. So if I give an athlete where I think it's going to be an 8 millimeter lesion, and when I get in there, it ends up being 14, 15 millimeters after I do the debridement, Cartiform has been my go to. And that 12 by 19 millimeter design is very, very nice for the femoral condyle lesions. I've also moved away from suturing the edges. I've used more towards the suture anchors. So typically, you know, you have that lesion, you think it's going to be moderate, it's big, you take it all out, and you're left with a bigger hole than you anticipated. You can bill cartiform as an osteochondral allograft because there is a one millimeter area of bone, so you can bill it as 27415. Technique, contour the recipient site, debride down to bleeding bone, plus minus on microfracture. Autograph, bone graft, if it's a deep lesion or if it's a revision case. Slot side down, central stabilizing or peripheral sutures, fiber and glue, question is how much, and ACP. I also soak the graft in ACP for about five, 10 minutes before I insert the graft. So there is the blue mark slot down, insert the suture and the suture anchors, pass the sutures through the graft, and apply your glue and your ACP. Fixation, I often place one central suture or peripheral sutures using the 12.5 biocomposite push locks. Two ovicles put through the push lock before you insert it, and then I follow the suture and tie it down over the top. For the initial 15 cases, I sutured the edges, and then looking at my patients with the suture at the edges versus the grafts with uh, fixation with anchors has been no difference. And the use of the suture is particularly helpful when you have that inferior lateral lesion that's very difficult to get a stitch in. So some cases. 
a 50-year-old runner, two degrees of symmetric varus, MRI at 16 weeks, status post cardiform to the mutiformal condyle, 12 millimeter lesion. And there's the green showing some good generation of cartilage on the T2 mapping three Tesla at the 16 week point. Physical therapy, range of motion at three days, partial weight bearing in an unloaded brace. This is for the femoral condyle lesions. Full weight bearing in an unloaded brace at six weeks, remove the brace at 12 weeks, de weighted running at 16, ground running at six months, and athletes return to full activity at four months with anticipation return to play at five to six months. No NSAIDs for three months, with the exception being 81 of aspirin for the DVT risk for my moderate risk patients. Patella, a 30-year-old, status post patella dislocation, previous abrasion chondroplasty on the lower left, preparing the lesion, lower right, sizing the lesion. Sutures are placed. The graft is tied, and this is one of those ones where the sutures are outside. And again, I've seen no difference when you put the sutures on the outside versus when you bury the sutures under the graft. Lateral trochlea case, a 43-year-old with an effusion, continued pain. MRI shows a 15-millimeter lesion in the trochlea. And so for these revision cases, again, I bone graft below the cardiform. I put the anchors in. The bone graft goes on top of the anchor in the suture, and then I tie it down. Patel femoral compartment, range of motion at three days, just like for the femoral condyle, but my weight bearing is faster. I let them heel weight bear. I tell them 50%, but I know they cheat. I let them weight bear basically on their heel with the brace locked and extension right away. Remove the brace at around eight weeks, de it running at 16 weeks, ground running at five months for the athletes return to play around four or five months. So to date, 70 cases between 11 and 65, and this is excluding my backfill cases. Equal mix of all compartments, 66 patients with good short-term results, no infections, one patient with some knee fibrosis, two patients with recurrent swelling, and one patient with increased surgical pain postoperatively, encouraging MRI results for all the patients. Uh, thanks to Arthrex, finally got approved to start a retrospective and prospective study looking at both cartiform and biocartilage. SOS data is being developed and MRI's T2 mapping three Tesla. So people have been asking about any second look. So here's a second look case that I think you'll like. This is a 45-year-old athletic trainer and prefixation of the metaphormal condyle with cartiform. So there's the MRI, there's the defect in the metaphormal condyle. In her trochlea, very similar size defect. So I used de novo in the trochlea. I didn't have enough cartiform at that time. And here she is two years post-op. Medial compartment's doing great. Anterior knee is bothering her. There's the MRI at year two and the scope picture at year two. And again, this shows you the upper right-hand corner, what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like after. And in the medial compartment, she was great. In the trochlea, the cartilage was breaking down, had not healed well, and so she was revised to an Arthrex product in the trochlea. So overall, it's been a great go-to. And again, there's some new sizes that are available.